Hi everybody, um, I'm Anita from ketogenicwoman.com. Uh, today is uh, a video that it, I'm putting out instead of a Tuesday talk uh, because the days of the week are kind of mixed up from Christmas and, and everything else. I'm going to talk about some things that I have learned in 2023 and how I'm taking them forward with me into 2024. Uh, so I've identified five things that were very impactful, I guess I will say, and, uh, you know, that have brought up things and made me realize uh, some misconceptions that I had, some limiting beliefs, that kind of thing. And I'm passing them on to you and, you know, some of them may resonate with you and maybe not, um, but even if just one does, I think it's worth talking about. Number one, uh, I was having a conversation with a friend who, uh, she's not a keto person or a carnivore person. She said to me, focusing on just the weight is like focusing on the color of your car when the engine is broken. And that really struck me. Um, uh, by the way, her name is Christy. She does have a YouTube channel, nothing to do with uh, what you know we talk about on this channel. She, she makes coloring books. Uh, her channel is called Color with Christy. Um, but when she said that, I was very struck by it. And it kind of summarized a whole bunch of things that I've been learning this year. And one of those, you know, to look at this in practical terms, one of the things that I learned this year was that you have to set the right kind of goals. For years and years and years, I would set a goal that would sound like this, and I would have little post-it notes and things. In January, I am going to lose 10 pounds. Or, uh, you know, by the end of 2024, I am going to weigh X number of pounds. That's what my goals look like. Can I really say that or predict that or control what the scale is going to do? So one thing that I learned uh, from taking coaching, I, I took some... I'm in Kelly Hogan's uh, coaching groups where it's like group, a group coaching situation. Uh, she doesn't have you set goals like that. She has you do these daily little bubble sheets where you set uh, intentions of what you're going to do on a daily basis. So for example, uh, you know, 30 days or 31 days in the month, I'm going to, you know, drink X number of glasses of water. I'm going to uh, eat only animal products or I'm not going to eat processed carbs or I'm going to avoid sweeteners. You know, what, those task type uh, things like where, where you're, actually control, you're actually working on things that you yourself can control. I can control which foods I eat. I can control which foods I decide I'm not going to buy at the the grocery store. I can control whether or not I choose to exercise, drink water, turn the TV off at seven, you know, or the social media or whatever. Those are the daily activities that I can control. If I can control enough of those and, or, you know, follow, like do all the right things on a day by day by day basis. I mean, nobody's perfect every single day, but let's say most days I have a little checkbox on all those daily activities. How much more likely is it that I might lose, you know, X amount of pounds by some certain date? I'm probably gonna do a lot better than if I have some kind of arbitrary goal that says I want to lose this many pounds in this many months but I don't have a plan to follow I don't have a daily activity list so that's the kind of thing like just looking at you know these bigger picture items of things you can do to get to where you want to go so that was the first thing so I want to thank you know Christy for saying that uh, thing to me that she said and uh, for Kelly's amazing, you know, weekly coaching group. 
The second thing that I learned in 2023 is I went down the omega-3 rabbit hole uh, on, one, on one of Dr. Boz's videos that I happened to catch where she talked about the results of her groups that she does uh, with her, uh, I think it's her metabolic reset group. She always puts them through a three-day sar sardine challenge. I don't normally buy sardines and sea canned seafood, those sorts of things, until that time. That was in February that I, that I first did the three-day challenge. Um, I was really impressed with my results and how good I felt, you know, high ketones, low blood glucose, and I just really got into it. And, and so now I have some kind of seafood once a day at one of my meals. It might be the main focus of a meal in a day, or it might be, you know, a can of sardines beside my steak or half a can of cod livers, some type of seafood that is high in omega-3s. I have now every single day. I feel like I have a lot of benefit from that. Um, I mean, you know, I don't have to tell you, you can look it up for yourself and do your own research about the amount of benefit you get from having those extra omega-3s. Uh, I feel it in my joints. Uh, I shouldn't be able to probably do as much as I do as far as my exercise routine. And I attribute that to the omega-3 is helping my joints. And so I'm, you know, that, that was uh, something I'm glad I learned. And it has been reinforced by, you know, you know being coached as well and, and by other things, uh, other influencers that I've watched who all seem to be embracing the omega-3s. So, um, you know, maybe you don't like sardines. You certainly don't have to eat three days worth, but maybe you can find ways to incorporate more seafood into your diet. The third thing I learned was that I needed more protein. For my age and activity level and the things I still want to accomplish in my life, the amount of protein I was eating was just not cutting it. Uh, I, I, you know, was having handfuls of hair in the shower. There's like all kinds of things going on. And so I, um, with help from another set of coaches, Alice and Kevin, they uh, convinced me to go to a much higher amount of protein. And I've been doing that. Uh, my nails are strong. My hair is getting better. My skin is improving. My energy levels. Uh, I also through that process discovered I had a self-limiting belief that said I lose weight slowly if at all I can only lose you know one or two pounds a month these are self-limiting beliefs that I was carrying around I you know in a couple of months lost I think uh, 12 13 14 pounds something like that and so I am continuing into 2024 to uh, keep that protein level higher. Uh, so yeah, thank you, Alice and Kevin, for that. The fourth thing that I learned and uh, just, I mean, I knew this before, but it's something that just kind of hit home to me is the importance of ADLs or activities of daily living and how quickly a person can lose those abilities as they get older. And I had a major uh, fall in July as I was moving. I tripped over a light stand <laughs> and fell hard on a previously injured knee and, uh, you know, had to get x-rays and, and go through all that. And, and I knew that my knee was getting bad, but uh, now I know that it's bone on bone. Um, and, you know, there's potentially a, a knee surgery coming. But the activities of daily living, I mean, it's a small thing can quickly upend that. And I recovered quite quickly, and I believe it's because of the higher protein. But activities of daily living are things like carrying groceries, going up and down stairs, putting away those groceries in, in cupboards, uh, bending to put things away, going up on a stool to put things away 
getting in and out of the chair without assistance, without using your hands. You should be able to just stand, stand up out of the chair, um, and, you know, like keeping your legs strong. Uh, I think I mentioned up and down the stairs, in and out of a car, in and out of your bed, uh, getting dressed without assistance, you, you know, being able to stand up and putting your socks and underwear on rather than, than sitting down, like so, you know, maintaining some balance. And these are things that are accomplished with what Coach Bronson calls the seven daily essential movements. And he came on my channel a couple months ago and talked about that. And, and that really, it had a, a, an effect on me as well. And he said something towards the end of our conversation. You know, he, he, he said something about just think think strong like you can do this you know you are you are strong enough you can do hard things all of that and i think about that whenever i don't feel like doing the exercises so uh you know thank you coach bronson for that and also i want to thank kevin again from alice and kevin um you know the husband and wife carnivore team uh, Kevin helped me to design my own personal exercise plan that I can do given my knee injury and, and other things. And so I'm very grateful because I feel like the seven essential movements are things that uh, I have in hand. I can, I can do them and I will continue to work on that and improve that. Uh, and the last thing that I'm going to talk about that I learned in 2023 and I'm, you know, doubling down on it for 2024 is that I don't need to have a label or to follow anybody's idea or label of what my program that I follow should look like. I'm a valid part of this community, I feel, even if I... I'm not, you know, even if I don't follow things perfectly the way somebody else would prefer that I do. Um, and, you know, so I have, I have, uh, I get a certain number of comments about that, um, you know, about not being a real carnivore because of blah, 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 or not being, I should be more keto because then I could, you know, do this or that or, or whatever. It was never my goal I didn't set out in life to be a perfect carnivore. It's not my goal to be a perfect carnivore or to follow somebody else's idea of what that looks like. My one and only goal is to follow the thing that works best for me um, on a, from a health perspective. So if on, you know, it, on a daily basis, I just want to avoid the pain and suffering that certain foods cause me. So things like nightshades and certain seasonings, that causes me a, a lot of heartburn, it causes me health issues. I avoid those things for that reason. And conversely, if I'm at a restaurant or I'm, you know, at someone's home, you know, invited for dinner or, or whatever, uh, there's about four or five vegetables uh, that I can eat quite freely that don't cause me any harm. I don't buy them. I don't keep them in the house. Uh, it's just easier that way. But if they come my way, I'll enjoy a little bit of asparagus. Uh, the other one is mushrooms. Uh, there's a couple more. I, I mean, it's, you know, I can't even think of them because it's, it's hardly something that I do very often. But I just don't fuss about it. And for those seasonings that I do well with, like white pepper, um, uh, oregano, there's, there's a few seasonings that don't bother me at all. I just use them in very small quantities. Most of the times I just use Redmond salt. I, I, I'm okay with that. And it's okay that I'm not fitting in that label of, you know, pure carnivore. Um, I, I'm, I'm good with that. It doesn't bother me. So uh, please don't let it bother you. Um, I'm even, you know, if I ran into some, like I, I moved into a new place and I'm planning on planting a raspberry patch back there of my dad's raspberries. We brought some bushes with us. Um, and it's something that I, 
I enjoyed, I used to enjoy in the spring when those raspberries came into uh, season, I would have a few and think about my dad. And that's the only time. I don't buy them from the store. I don't eat, you know, bushels of them or make jam or anything. The kids eat them. And uh, I, I'm not going to have a problem with that. And, uh, you know, if, if anyone else does have a problem with that, uh, you know, that's, that's their thing. It's, it's not mine. And I just feel like I want to have a balanced approach to my health because there's also mental health. There's also joy. There's also things that are good for my soul if they don't affect me physically and they're good for my soul, like enjoying my dad's raspberries once a year. I'm all for it. And, uh, I'm going to do it with a smile on my face and still be my healthiest self. And, you know, for that attitude, I want to thank people, people like Kelly Hogan, uh, Lily Kane. I think I've, I've watched some of her videos and I know, I know that, uh, you know, she's, she, she is of that mindset as well. Plus a few other people that I appreciate their, take on things it makes me feel like i'm not i'm not such a weirdo or an anomaly or a rule breaker i'm just trying to be healthy I, i'm not i'm not trying to be to be perfect so i i hope that that these things help just one person out there uh, going forward in 2024. If you are thinking about doing keto or low carb or carnivore in the new year, and you're thinking that it's an onerous thing and that it is ultra restrictive, it might feel that way at first, but I would encourage you to, to jump in and figure out what is right for you. It's not going to look exactly like how I do it. It's not going to look exactly like how a lot of other people out there do it. It, it has to be right for you. And, and that's what I support. I support people doing something that is right for them. Anyways, those are my thoughts on the things that have impacted me for 2023 and what I'm carrying forward with me in 2024. I, I hope you'll join me on this journey. Uh, you know, come and watch my live streams every Sunday night, uh, back again in January uh, for 7 p.m. Eastern time, Q&As, special guests. I hope that uh, you'll watch some of my uh, cooking videos and, you know, come over and tell me how you're doing and if there's anything that you'd like some help with, uh, I'm, I'm here for it. So uh, Happy New Year, everybody. Thanks for watching.